Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So I had another video queued up and I wanna talk about this. This thought that just kind of popped into my head so I just kind of wanna run with it. Um, Democrats despise progressives, period. I'm gonna let that hang for a bit because I think lefties feel this. Intuitively, they feel it, even though they never might have, they, they may have never articulated it. I'll do you the benefit of, I'll, I'll do you the favor. I'll articulate it. Democrats despise lefties. Whether you're a progressive, whether you're independent, if you trend to the left, hell, if you're unnameable, whatever you are, if you are considering yourself to the left and if you vote Democrat, even if you don't necessarily ascribe to the policies of Democrats, they probably greatly dislike you. You annoy them. You bug the shit out of them. I've been around them, annoying them, bugging the shit out of them, asking questions, talking about certain policies, talking about things, failings, failures, fuck ups, foibles, things that they've done wrong, magnificently wrong, things that they've said they believed in, but things that they failed to deliver on in that belief, even when they had the opportunity to deliver on. Failures. Failures. Us bringing that stuff up, however, is not really the reason. Political parties argue all the time. They spar, they call each other bad names, all that stuff, all the time. That's not what it is. The fact is, the Democratic Party has been able to declare itself the definitive left in the United States. Definitive left. It's two parties, Republican, Democrat. We're the definitive left. If you're going to get involved in the politics and you want to have an actual vote, this is where it is. Problem is, they're not really the left. They would be considered a conservative party if you were talking about Britain. That's somewhat problematic. If you consider yourself to actually be on the left, and this is your end to the political system, you can see that can be somewhat problematic. The reason why they dislike you, the reason why when those candidates run, that are lefty candidates running throughout the United States, and they're being shafted in the thumb of the DNC or the thumb of the state apparatus coming down on them, and they find themselves running in the same hurdles that they ran into in the 2016 election. They despise you. They don't want you in those offices. They tell you that it's impossible for you to get in those offices. They tell you that they would never vote for you and all this other. They tell you all sorts of things. They do whatever they can do to keep you out that office because the last thing they wanted is a lefty in that office. I say that to say it's a comparative thing. Fact is, you can have any world you want, providing you live with the consequences of that particular arrangement. I've said that so more times than I can count because it's flat fact, true, so much sacrosanct. There's no God above forcing your world to be that way. So when I look at the world and society, I say, what do we need to do to achieve the objectives that we want to achieve as the left? That's where I start. Now, I would say that the lefties are the true believers. I would say that the lefties are the people who actually believe that government can work. It would like to use the apparatus and actually do things that are problematic in our society. That's what I would say. I would say that most lefties feel that way. Does the Democratic Party do that, feel that way? I would say no. I would actually, what does the Democratic Party stand for? By the same token, if I actually, what does the left, meaning lefties or progressives stand for? You would probably already know. At the very least, you can give a list of things that they want to enact and want to affect. I, I'm making a point to you that there is a difference in those things. There is a distinction in those things. For the Democratic Party to call itself the definitive left and is now confronted with something that's actually to the left, that actually knows what it stands for, is, actually knows what it is, well, you can understand that could be a problem. It brings out the deficiencies when something is standing beside you that's just materially better. They hate you because they are, you're their darker brother. You're who they're supposed to be philosophically. And it gives them this idea of what they're not. What they say they represent versus what they don't represent. It bugs them. It sticks in their craw. It's the thing that tells them you're a failure. You're not living up to your philosophical responsibility and duties in that particular office. The fact is, if a lefty got into that office and a lefty did what that lefty said he was going to do, it abolishes the Democratic Party as it stands. Immediately. Immediately may be too strong, but you know what I mean. They cease to be the definitive left when there's something there that's actual to the left. Everything that they do at that point is put up against what that person is advertising. 
Meaning if Sanders wins in 2020 and Sanders is jumping around the country telling people they want healthcare, education, and so forth, and he's doing it, then right off the bat, he went into office and did what he said he was going to do. And fact is, do you really want to run up against that as a Democrat? You said you believe in these things for God knows how long for the last 50, 60 years. And this guy gets in office running under the banner of your party, even though the, up to this point he's called himself a socialist. And he does what you said couldn't be done. Not just does what you said couldn't be done. He, and, and let me make one point. Even if he can't necessarily get everything done, the fact that the public sees him trying, the fact that he sees that his own party is in opposition to what is taking place, even though that party says it believes in those values, that is dramatic. That makes it something else. That's not Democratic Party as the Democratic Party has gone up to this point for the last 50 years. It's something else. It changes. It fundamentally changes what it means to be the left in America. And the last thing they want with their corporate overlords, giving them cash in the campaigns, is for the left to be redefined in that way. Fact is, the Democratic Party has made a falsely embark, and I'm going to end this because this is going too long. I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes. They made a falsely embark that they can take massive amounts of money to get elected and make minute incremental changes. The left sees this as a failure, and they don't like this bargain. There is an antagonism between what would be considered the left in the Democratic Party versus what I would consider the Democrats, the, the liberal Democrats. I call them libs. You have these business-friendly Democrats who, for the most part, is the Democratic Party. And in the same way the Republican Party takes all this money, the Democratic Party does exactly the same thing. They view the world in similar terms. It's more fair to say that the Republican Party and Democratic Party are just wings of the same party. I don't see why that's not fair to say. Yes, there are differences, but there are always differences. The question becomes, do they see the world in fundamentally the same way with minor caveats in certain things and how rapacious they determine they want to be? And the answer is yes. Hillary Clinton ran in this election. That woman should be in the Republican Party. So I, I guess I'm just making this point. When you no longer cease to be the definitive Democratic Party, when what represents you or what, what, what the left looks like no longer looks like a corporatist, but it looks like somebody like a lefty. Maybe not all the way to the left as I am, but definitely a lefty. Definitely a lefty. They don't like that. They don't like that. When Nonet Klobeck kind of made this point that Democrats need to shut up about class, right there, that's the divide in the party. That conversation about class, the Faustian bargain that the Democrats signed for all intents and purposes said we can talk about identity all we want, but we are not going to have these grand sweeping conversations about the system itself, the inequalities of that particular system and class. If we have those conversations, we're going to lose our donors. The left doesn't like that. The left doesn't like the fact that these guys are, are, are we essentially have a noose around them because of their bargains that they've made. If one of these guys gets in office, it starts the process of dismantling that system. And if one of these guys can deliver on what they're saying, or at the very least get the public to believe that he's trying to deliver on what he's saying, what it means to be a Democrat will fundamentally change in this country. They hate you because they understand that you will replace them if you got your light, your time in the sun. So. Yes, they despise you, but they despise you because you essentially are their obliteration. You're their doom bringer, and they recognize it as such. So they despise you, and they hate you, and they put their thumb on the scale in one election after the next to prevent you from getting in office, causing a shift, a radical shift in what it means to be the left in America. Fight on. You're going to win this fight, by the way, but fight on. It's going to look bad in the short term, but fight on. The fact that they hate you is a blessing of sorts, a badge of honor, accept it as such. All right, guys, I'll leave it at that. I don't want this one to be long. I want it to be somewhat short. I'm trying to do short videos when I do these type of just ramblings. All right, guys, if you enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, as always, Patreon. Thanks, everyone.